Hi, welcome to our Runners World Live about knees and running. I'm here at Pure Sports Med in Finsbury Square in London, uh, joined by physiotherapist Aaron and sports doctor AJ. Hello. And uh, we're going to go through the knee. We will get a lot of questions about knees uh, being, and running being bad for your knee, um, which isn't true. Um, we hope to sort of dispel a few and uh, answer a few questions about that today. Um, we'll start with you, AJ. Mm. The knee and its components. So we get a lot of people talking about pain within their knee, and I think that one of the main issues is, is explaining what that pain is. Yeah. Um, so biomechanically and anatomically, how the, the knee and running, so how the main components of the knee and how does it work with running? Well, it's a, it's a complicated structure, and I think the most important thing is trying to get the diagnosis right from the beginning. So there's obviously lots of different things that can hurt in the knee, and there's lots of different types of structures in different areas. So the first thing I would always say is don't try and self-diagnose. Go see go see a specialist, whether that's a physio or a sports doctor, uh, and try and get the right diagnosis because the rehab you go through will completely change depending on what's wrong. Um, so that's the first thing to say. With any joint, there's different structures involved. So you've got muscle, tendon, ligaments, bone, um, shock absorbers, like the, the meniscus, a particular type of structures in the knee. So there's lots and lots of different things going on there. And they can all generate pain. The knee's quite helpful, actually, because it, if you've got soreness and it's in a localised, specific area, it's quite a helpful indicator of actually where it is. Where other joints, like the hip, um, if it's painful, it can be referred. So the knee actually doesn't tend to have as much referred pain and you can diagnose pretty accurately. Um, so if you were to break down the knee in terms of ana anatomical structures, there's two main joints. So the, the main joints are really the kneecap joint uh, and the kneecap sits on your uh, thigh bone, the femur, um, and the joint between the femur and your shin bone, which is the tibia. So those are the two types of joints. And Within those joints, there are there is cartilage lining the joints, um, and within the, the femur and the tibial joint, there's two shock absorbers. So those are the, those are like the internal components of the knee. And around the knee, you've got tendons running from the quads, so the quadriceps tendon, and then the patella tendon, and they both insert into the kneecap. Um, Providing stability to the knee, there's ligaments, so you've got ligaments that run around the inside of the knee and then around the outside of the knee and inside the knee so that stop it sort of wobbling forwards and backwards. So all those things can cause problems and can cause pain, so it's, it's a very, very important to get the diagnosis right in the beginning. Absolutely. I think that one of the main things to discuss today is that, the, that certain parts of the knee and the localised pain that you mentioned, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's something specifically wrong with the knee, it's actually, it, it could be a, a, con a contributing muscle group or something else that's pulling or put, like not correctly working with the knee. And I think that's what a lot of people diagnose themselves as knee pain is actually probably more something to do with the quad or perhaps a hamstring or any of these other sort of muscle issues. Exactly, so, so we were talking about uh, hamstring pain earlier, so a very common uh, problem for patients to have pain on the inside of the knee is inflammation of the hamstring tendon insertion, what we call the PES. So actually, people, most people think their hamstring is being up here, but they come, the ones on the inside come all the way around and insert onto the shin bone. So if you're not, you might think you've got knee pain, but actually it's coming from your hamstrings. So if you're not rehabbing or, or loading or treating your hamstrings appropriately, that's never gonna resolve regardless of what you do to your knee. Um, the only thing I'd briefly say on structures of the knee mm. is that little signs like does your knee swell, does your knee lock, or does your knee give way are very, very important clues. Because mm. um, if you've got swelling um, and a particular type of swelling on the knee is more indicative that it's coming from inside the knee and it might be a meniscal problem or it might be something to do with the, uh, the, the lining of the knee where if it doesn't swell and there's just a bit of what we call bogginess on the outside of the knee, that's a very, very different type of pathology and very different type of, of swelling. Um, so it needs trained eye, it needs experience to kind of just get through, get past that. But uh, most good sports medicine physios and doctors will be able to sort of diagnose it pretty clearly. And when we move into the sort of the muscles that control the knee and, and, and sort of indicators of, of, of an 
an injury that's sort of localized to a certain muscle group, mm -hmm. what are the key things that you look for as a doctor when someone comes in? If someone says, you know, oh, my knee hurts at the front of my knee, and it could be the patellar tendon, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, are there indicators that people can kind of see themselves, or is it more? Uh, it, it's difficult. I mean, I mean, there's. As Erin will talk about later, function has got to do a lot of it. So, so when you take uh, a history from the patient, if they're saying, oh, I get pain around my knee on landing or climbing upstairs or jumping, for example, then that might lean you towards certain diagnosis, like a, a tenor tendon problem, for example. Um, so it always starts with a history, and it's always important to get a good, detailed story of what's happened. Um, but like I said, if someone's complaining of a true patellar tendinopathy or problems with the patellar tendon, when you press the patellar tendon, it will be sore. Right. Uh, so if you're, not if you're pressing the patellar tendon and it's fine, then it, it, it sort of moves you away from that diagnosis. Yeah. The other important thing that we can do in this setting um, is use the ultrasound machine. So I've had a scan of your knee earlier, yeah. and actually you can get quite useful information on what structures are involved, what structures aren't involved by using the scanner. So that just adds to the examination. So it's all these pieces of the puzzle that we're putting together really. Exactly. Narrowing the function in regards to sort of when you're, you know, someone comes and sees AJ and AJ is very able to, to scan or to manipulate and to have a feel around, your then role is to sort of take the, the supporting elements of the knee and try and figure out and, and help people rebuild right. strength where it's needed. Yeah. So. As AJ said, the diagnosis is the most important thing to get at the beginning, but ultimately we're always looking for the underlying cause. So if your patellar tendon is annoyed, we're always thinking, why is the patellar tendon annoyed? Is it because uh, your muscles don't have the, the strength to withstand the load that you're putting through that tendon? Is it related to your running technique, for example? Um, is it related to short muscles? Is it your anatomy? So that's sort of my job as a physio, is I'm trying to figure out what is this underlying cause and how are we going to treat it? So we're always looking for the why. And do you have any real, um, are there sort of any sort of classic scenarios where you know certain pain is always relatable to sort of certain muscle groups? Does it sort of when you see with runners, especially now we've got the build up to marathons coming in, overworked yeah. muscles causing transferred pain and those sorts of things? I can definitely say there's some trends that we see. So lateral knee pain is very very common. Mm -hmm. IT band we call it IT band friction syndrome, which is pain on the outside of the knee. Um, doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem with the structure of your knee, it's related usually to tension higher up in something called the IT band, which is a band of collagen fibers that runs all the way up to the hip. So the problem could actually be more related to the hip joint, um, a weakness up above. Uh, so uh, that's a common one. Shin splints is another one, oftentimes related to uh, running technique, you know, a strong heel strike pattern or but most often, actually, it's people that just overload themselves. They do too much too soon, and that's generally the most common cause of most injuries. If you had a sort of a, a, a drill or a routine that people could, should be doing every single day or else three times a week or something just to make sure that the, the key muscles that, that operate around the knee are strong, are there any sort of direct exercises that people should be doing? I have to say, unfortunately, I can't really make it as simple as that. There, I, I don't think there's a recipe. I yeah. think it's very individualized. So yeah. the assessment that I do is very, very important. Um, I'm definitely, I do a similar assessment for everybody, yeah. but the treatment is very individual. Uh, yeah, course, so it depends on your, but I'm always looking for the strength above the knee. And if there's some weakness up there, I'm going to be giving some exercises. That's great. Yeah. But, but on that, I'd say if, if you've got someone and you're a keen runner and you're running the marathon and all you do is run, mm -hmm. then that's that might be fine for you, as you say, that might be but more often than not, there are other elements to training, whether it's strength training, whether it's weight training, um, cross training, yeah. cross training yeah. other elements. Usually doing too much of any one particular exercise it, it's gonna cause problems. So yeah. you need to try and have a balanced training program. Yeah. And that's where sort of and, and that's what we try to get across. Most of the time we, we're reining people back and telling them to, to, to uh, have some rest days sure. and, and do some strengthening exercises on the side. Yeah. We had a few questions come in on Facebook, I think we're trying to answer a few, and it's very difficult to, to offer a diagnosis over, over yeah. Facebook, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. Yeah, um, are, in terms of the knee supports or tape, which would be better? Tape or knee supports. Do you want to start? <laughs> Again, there's there's no 
so, so, so from a medical point of view, actually there's very limited evidence to suggest that either of them are actually very good. Um, but they, they obviously do work, they obviously do have benefits. Uh, but again, it really, really depends on what you're treating. A knee support is more of a generic support, and uh, you, see, you see people run marathons with a generalised tubi grip. Uh, they don't know why they put it on, they don't know what it's for. Uh, but if, if it's done properly by, by someone like Aaron, for example, you can offload structures appropriately with tape. So if you've got kneecap problems, you can offload or try to offload the kneecap with, with, with taping done properly. Um, so again, it's very, very individualised and it depends on what you're trying to cheat. A treat, but um, but generally going to a pharmacy and buying a generic knee brace for knee support uh, is not solving the underlying problem. And I, I tend to take people in a, in a session, so I'll test them, whatever causes their pain. Um, I'll use that as an objective measure, so I will put the tape on, I'll do that same objective measure. If they have a 50% reduction in symptoms, 100% I'm going to use the tape, so Good. that's how it works. Very subjective though. Yeah, of course, the patient says, I feel better with the tape on, and uh, maybe there's a bit of a placebo component, but we'll take it. <laughs> so Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's worth a try. For sure. Yeah. Um, someone else has said they've got a lot of stress on their MCL and the severe stabbing-like pain, and they're doing London 11 days. What should they do? Um, well, if, how do they know that is the first question. Have they just prodded their knee and said they've got MCL pain? I mean, that's a very specific diagnosis. Um, and when you talk about MCL, you, you're, not, you're not really talking about stress, you're talking about laxity of, of a ligament. It's a ligament on the inside of the knee. So um, that would need appropriate testing to make sure that the knee is stable, is the first thing. So if someone came to me and they, had, they, they said, I've got a really, really torn or strained MCL, um, you, you'd want to test the stability of the knee is the first thing. Um, so with regards to what you can do before the marathon, I think just try and make sure you know what you're dealing with first. So if you can get and try and see someone, um, then that's fine. Come in and see me. <laughs> okay. In terms of yeah, stabilising the knee, um, what are the, the key muscle groups in terms of like that biomechanical motion of running? Um, just quickly, sort of you know from toe off through to sort of landing again. What are the what muscle groups sh should people be using? I mean, is it because you know that biomechanics is. It's pretty straightforward for everyone, right? It's, right. The same, it's the same principle. Yeah, there's lots of muscle groups, um, but we often see weakness up in the glutes. Um, uh, gluteus medius is one. Mm -hmm. it, it's just because we don't use it very much. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people that sit all day, I call it gluteal amnesia, your glutes kind of just switch off if you have a desk job. So, and then if you go from that job and then suddenly start running, those muscles aren't working and you can get sort of wobbly knees sort of, sort of, that aren't as stable. So that's a big muscle group that's important. Mm -hmm. But maybe just as importantly, deep, some deep calf muscles that you need for propulsion as well. Yeah. Um, so lower down, you've got to have the, the capacity to push off, especially if you're doing hill training or you're running faster, then certain muscle groups become more important. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It also depends on what yeah. type of running you're doing. If you're a sprinter, mm -hmm. you're going to be looking for those power muscles mm -hmm. as opposed right. to an endurance runner where you'd perhaps want more of a balance between your quads and your hamstrings and, and the rest of it. So, so it's very, very individualised. Okay. Uh, any more questions, Jane? Um, there's a lot of people saying they've got kind of crunchy knees and what should they be doing? Should they be avoiding squats and lunges and stuff like that when their knees making that crunching sound? So, so clicking knees are more often than not completely normal and completely fine. And um, there's lots of different theories of why the knees click. Um, some say it's, it's gas escaping from the joint, some say it's, it's uh, ligaments rubbing, um, but that's not a symptom to be afraid of. So, so I spend a lot of my time telling people, don't worry about clicking knees. If I, if I, if I was to limit exercise to what I do, because my clickiness, I wouldn't do anything. So joints are clicky in their nature. There's a difference between clickiness and what we call crepitus, which is which is a sign of wear and tear. Um, so again, that needs someone to have a listen and feel uh, and give an appropriate diagnosis. But more often than not, clicking knees are fine, and most knees will click once you get into a deep squat position, getting out. Um, so that generally you wouldn't, you wouldn't worry too much about that. Especially if there are no no pain with the with the clicking, I wouldn't worry. 
Um, and someone else has asked how important is it to get your feet measured and your gait checked and to kind of do that to look after your knees and how often should you be doing that as a runner? I, I'm biased because I do running assessments, but I, I think it is very important. If you, if you have had a uh, history of running injuries, if you're injury prone, uh, there's certainly no harm in getting a gait assessment or a running assessment just to take a look. Because everybody has their own unique way of running and walking, but there are some ways that might promote um, sort of a uh, more efficient type of running style and decrease your risk of injury for sure. So it's definitely worth having a look. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, someone else asked, do you recommend supplements to help with achy knees? I'm 41 and I run regularly. Yeah, so with cod liver oil and calcium and all those, I mean, is it? That's okay. It, it's one of these things, again, there's, there's very, very limited evidence to suggest that any supplementation um, helps with knees. There's, there's now a bit of evidence for something called glucosamine um, to help the, the cartilage and the regeneration of knees. But cod liver oil, fish oils, um, glucosamine aren't going to do you any harm if you're taking them in the correct doses uh, and an appropriate usage. So I would say there's no problem. But if, if people are under the impression that they've got a bit of wear and tear, which is completely normal for a 41-year-old to have wear and tear in knees, that it's if they're suddenly going to uh, regenerate them, that that's, that's not the case. Um, but, but, they, but they can be beneficial effects for joint health in general if you do take supplements. Um, but yeah. The right ones. The right the right ones under medical advice and um, and with, with the appropriate kind of expectations and what you can achieve. Got it. I think I think we're probably out of time unfortunately. But thanks everyone for their questions. Um, I hope this has helped. Um, the knee the wonderful running joint that is the knee. Look after it. Um, seek medical care if you need uh, and a big thanks to AJ and Aaron here at Pure Sports Med for uh, chatting to us. Um, thanks a lot guys. No problem.